Caitlin Deaver starred in both Booksmart and uh, on the big screen and Unbelievable on Netflix in 2019. Um, uh, starting with Unbelievable, uh, that tells the true story of a serial rape investigation uh, and one victim uh, who, uh, Caitlin, you play, who wasn't believed. Um, so first off, uh, were you previously familiar with that story or, or the article or the podcast uh, about it that inspired the series? No, I, I wasn't. And I think um, I... I don't think a lot of people know about the story or now they do because we're on, you know, you know, our story is on Netflix now and they, the word has really gotten out about it. But no, I was not aware of the story, um, which is a huge reason why I wanted to be a part of it in the first place. Um, I love being a part of uh, stories that were somewhat buried or were unknown. And that it's, it's a story that definitely, definitely deserves to be told and, 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 and known about. So I had just gotten all of the material from my agent and uh, read the story from there. And that was the first time I was, I was reading it and, and hearing about it. And the, uh, the first episode, the way the story is told, uh, focuses really centrally on, on your character as, uh, as she uh, experiences the assault and then undergoes the experience of reporting and, and, and uh, you know, the investigation and being doubted and eventually recanting. It, it's such an emotional episode to watch. Uh, what was it like to, to, to shoot and, and how long did that episode take? It was um, it was quite the, the process. I feel like, you know, it was such a jump for me, first of all. It was I had just come right from Booksmart, actually. I was on my last week uh, filming Booksmart, and I was coming up on a time where, as you know, as every actor experiences this, but I was coming up on a time where I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of this year. I have, I have nothing um lined up and it came to me at at a time where i was doing a, a a project that was the complete opposite of unbelievable and it was a lot to i guess dive into um especially that first episode i think was the the hardest out of all of them um but what was so great about everyone involved was that I was able to really take my time on everything. Um, and I felt very, very cared for, especially in the assault scenes alone. They were able to carve out an entire day for that specific day. And also the interview scenes um, took place over a course of like two or three days. And we just worked on those scenes alone, which was I guess really helpful because a lot of the times, you know, when we're doing something that heavy and that important, you want to give it, you want to give it your all. But sometimes, you know, we are rushed because we have another scene to get done or several scenes to get done that day. And it was really, really great that they, um, I guess, scheduled that ahead of time because it was, um, it was really, really important. And we also had a, a an advisor on set with us making sure that, Everything we were doing involving the cops and the case and and, and um, the interview scenes themselves were were done correctly because they wanted to get it really really right. And it's such a, it's such a you know weighty material uh, and your character goes through so much uh, over the course of the series. Uh, with you know, did you get a chance to decompress during the production? Like, is there a way to kind of just like take off these? Uh, these intense emotional feelings at the end of the day, uh, you know, to keep from burning out on it? Yeah. Um, you know, I had planned on, I don't know. I think I planned on coming out of it or originally. I definitely um, knew that it was going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my, in my life. And it definitely was. Um, looking back on it and uh, I definitely thought that I would I like I thought that I would be able to come out of it because that's what I normally do on everything I'm not um, very method I think it's really helpful to come come out of a character as much as possible uh, to sort of let yourself breathe and give it a break but with this one I think I had put so much pressure on myself um, I think because I, 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 
I I felt the importance of it. My my heart immediately broke for Marie when I when I read her story, and I just I just had to do her justice, and I couldn't I couldn't see any, and I can see I can see beyond that. So when it came time to like really get into it, I I almost felt like I completely forgot about myself for a second, um, because this story felt so much bigger than me. And in order to do it right, I really, really, I guess, needed to stay in it. But it didn't really happen on purpose. Um, it just sort of like happened naturally, I guess, out of my passion and love and respect for not only the story and, and Marie, um, but also just the people involved in it. Because um, I knew immediately that, you know, Susanna Grant and Lisa Cholodenko all and Sarah Timmerman all really, really cared about the project and really, really wanted to do it right. So I guess there were moments of, of peace I found. I guess at the end of the day, I was, we shot in L.A., so I was able to um, go home and have, have dinner with my family, which um, was very, very nice on, on, you know, at the end of the days that we were, were shooting like really, really um heartbreaking and and emotionally taxing scenes so i guess i found um my lightness in in those moments and uh the unique way the the story is told uh, uh marie's story is sort of in parallel to the investigation uh being conducted by uh the, the detectives played by tony collette and merrick weaver uh, did it feel like you were sort of shooting your own isolated movie or in a sense like that that story and, and did you you know get much time with tony and merritt on set even though you didn't you, you weren't acting with them primarily i was so bummed because <laughs> about this because Tony Collette is actually a huge inspiration for me. She's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to be an actor and fell in love with, um, like, I guess, more, more character work and really, really diving into a role. I grew up watching, like, you know, Disney Channel, which is, you know, Disney um, films really shaped me as a person, but The Sixth Sense was the very first movie I, my parents let me, my, the very first scary movie my parents let me watch, and her role in that just blew me away, and she's, that, that sort of sparked so much interest in maybe doing more dramatic uh, roles, because I was always loving making people laugh, but something in her her performance just really made me go, oh my god, that's that's a that's a real that's a real person. And I really want to do something like that. So I was really bummed that I did not get to have any scenes with her. But I feel so uh, lucky that I'm just even in the same show as her. I was able to tell her um, my love for her at, at a at a Netflix dinner um, that Netflix put together right before we started shooting. But no, I was always sort of like passing Merritt and Tony and on set, and I'd be in the like one side of the makeup trailer and then Tony would be on the other side of the trailer getting her hair done. And that was really the only time I got to see her. Um, but they're really, really lovely, lovely people. And I, um, I just really love the both of them so much. I really, really admire them and look up to them. And I can't believe I've got, I'm, I'm really just been getting to them, know them now and, and all of these interviews and press stuff that we've been doing together. But um, it was actually kind of nice Though at the end of the day, looking back on it, it was nice, I guess, for me to be more isolated um, because Marie is a in her story is she is a very isolated person. Every everyone was turning on her, everyone that she loved or uh, that ever cared about her sort of turned on her. So it was a very isolating experience for her. So I guess um, for me as an actor being in that setting, it was um I guess at the end of the day, it was actually pretty helpful. And uh, what do you hope uh, you know, audiences take away from, from Unbelievable when they watch it, like from Marie's story? What, what's the most important takeaway do you, that you hope for? There's, you know, it's been so, so incredible. Um, the response that it already has, has been getting, you know, I, I, I think that you just never know what, 
what kind of outcome uh, a show that you do is going to have and you can have so much love for it and um, it never even, you know, it may not ever get seen. So the fact that it this kind of story is on a platform like Netflix and people are actually watching it and a ton of people have seen it already and those people are actually really, really moved by it has been really um, just... I guess really overwhelming um, because I know how hard everybody worked on it. Um, but I guess there's so much to take away from it. I think um, if you are a survivor, I hope that you at least feel seen by the show. Um, and if you have never experienced this or maybe you um, know someone who has, I think it's important to see this show because it really can be eye opening. It can really. Um, show you how how um, sexual assault really, really affects someone, um, not only in that moment, but pretty much for the rest of their uh, the rest of their life. And it's a it's a very traumatic, traumatic experience. Um, and I guess also too, you know, what's so beautiful about the show is that it really shows um, the different reactions one can have to trauma. Uh, I think that this show beautifully um, demonstrates that. Uh, and I think it's a really important thing that, that I learned from, from being a part of this show is that everybody has a different upbringing and therefore it affects how they react to trauma. And so we really have to start um, listening to each other and, and believing survivors and um, not treating them as suspects from, from the get-go. Um, that's a really important thing that I learned, and I think a lot of people um, should know that. Uh, on a much lighter note, uh, Booksmart, uh, your other uh, project this year, which you mentioned you made uh, right before going into Unbelievable. Uh, you know, it's a high school comedy about overachievers trying to have one big party experience before they graduate. Uh, and it's, it's a rare teenage uh, teen comedy. It's got you know, female protagonists, female director, Olivia Wilde, female writers. Most of the producers are women, too. Uh, what, what did you think about that and of the story and the script when you read it? Oh my God, so many things. What a, what a jump, by the way, too. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I love Booksmart with every fiber of my being and will for the rest of my life. And I can't believe that Unbelievable and Booksmart happened within the same year and I was able to shoot both of them in, in the same year. I think it was just such an such an incredible um but both of them are such incredible projects to be a part of for i just it, it, those kind of projects don't come around that often and and the fact that they both shot in the same year it blows my mind but um and the fact that they all wanted me to be a part of it is also just insane but um book smarts well yeah i mean just i think i've learned that being on a set with so many women has been so so incredible and so just it's just amazing you know i feel like i've i've realized that women are just naturally more comfortable around women so the fact that um bd and i had olivia and katie silberman our writer like with us at all times and um i think being surrounded by their friendship because like olivia and katie are, are best friends in real life so having that relationship like right in front of us every single day was definitely um really, really important for the both of us. Um, but I, I guess just, I don't know. It's just, an, I, I, it's, I almost am at a loss for words when I, when I, when I talk about this group of people, because it's just, um, they're just really good at their job. All of them are just really, really good at their job. Jessica Elbaum is an incredible producer and we had an amazing, um, production designer who is a woman and our costume designer, April, just every woman at every corner was just really, really, really passionate about the story. And I think ultimately what I love about Olivia um, is that she wasn't necessarily trying to hire as, as, as many women as she possibly could. She was just trying to hire um, the people best that were best for the job and, and who had um, a lot of drive and a lot of passion and really understood what the story 
meant. Um, and I think that because of that, that is why our crew and the whole, uh, the whole entire team was um, just outstanding. And I think she did that with our cast too. You know, she really wanted to, she didn't want to go with your normal casting process. She really, really wanted to dive deep and find people who maybe had never done a movie before. And, and I think ultimately she found again, the best people for, for the role. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, I, I guess also to answer your question about the first time I read it, I, I read book smart about five years ago and it was a script that I, it was unlike anything I'd ever read before. It was, it was so refreshing and to read a story about female friendship that was so, so true. And so, um, uh, just, I, I just, it, it, these girls were just so smart and the great thing about them is that they are, they aren't afraid that they are smart. They are not, um, they're not self-conscious about it. They, they are so proud and they have so much drive and they, their love for each other really, really stood out to me. Um, because I think we all have had that friend at one point in time and they are, they are, they are like, they, it's like, a, it's like a romantic love story. It's, it's, um, it's a bond that I, I think that everybody has had. And I think that that's what um, really, really drew me to it at first. And also just reading a, a, a script with two women in the lead, that's a comedy also never really came around that often for me. So, and I, I really just fell in love with Amy and, and her kindness and compassion and um, the fact that I was going to be able to play a, a character that was queer and her sexuality wasn't put on a pedestal. I mean, everything across the board was just so refreshing and I couldn't believe that they wanted me to be a part of it. Yeah, that was one of the, uh, the things that struck me the most about the film was that you don't usually get like a queer story in this kind of matter of fact way. It's just part of who she is. It's not the central part of who she is, but they're not also not shying away from what that is to, you know, as a part of her life. Uh, right. So yeah, right. what would that like to explore? Yeah. I mean, it was just, I, I remember talking to Olivia about Amy in the first, in the first meeting I had with Olivia. And I remember thinking about Amy's character bio and, it wouldn't even mention her sexuality in the, in the first sentence. I think that there's so many wonderful things about Amy and her sexuality just never, never defines her and who she is as a person. Um, but I think, yeah, in the past when we've seen a queer character, they are solely there to be the gay character in the movie. And maybe the butt of the joke, or maybe we wouldn't see it even in a, in a female best friendship. Cause maybe, you know, they would start falling for, for the other character. And it was never that from the very beginning, which I just really, really, um, um, I guess I just really, really respect because I don't think we get to see that very often at all. Really. I don't think we've ever seen it. And I think that that's something that we really need more of. And, um, not only just having a queer character, but having a queer character that um, that explores her sexuality. We don't just mention um, that Amy is is gay. We 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 explore it. We see her explore it. Um, and I think that that's just um, that just really blew me away. And I'm and I'm just I'm just so happy to have been um, a part of something like that. And, uh, you, you know, you yourself have been acting since uh, you were a teenager. Uh, so could you in any way relate to that kind of overachiever aspect of these characters you were playing, given that your career has been you know, pretty precocious? I think so. I think I was I, I at the beginning of high school, I was I was a lot like Amy um, in my in my studies. And yeah, I think that I think that what's so amazing about these two characters is that um, they have so much passion and, and drive and they're so hardworking. And I think that they remind me a lot of 
the friends that I have. And some of the times we don't get to see that on screen. So I think that seeing that in a, in a character on page was, was really, really exciting. Um, and to know that I was going to be playing a character that, that I think a lot of my friends would relate to is, um, is definitely, is definitely really, really cool. But I think I, I definitely am an overachiever in my work. Um, and I think that what's, what's so great about Beanie is that she and I share the same work ethic. Um, and I think that that doesn't also happen that much. Um, because Beanie and I lived together during the process, and even that was something that we really we we agreed on twenty minutes into knowing each other. And I think that right then and there, I knew that she she had the same love for these uh, these two girls as as I did, and as Olivia did, and as Katie did. Um, but not not you don't get that that often. You don't get um, to work with someone necessarily who 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 has the same um, way of working as you do. And Beanie and I really wanted to memorize all of our lines and go over it every single day. We were going over it like like Molly and Amy would, and and we were basically like doing our homework every night because Olivia actually told us. Um, Right before we started shooting, she said she wanted to try to achieve the no sides on on set rule, which is basically just the little sides you get daily of all of the scenes that you're going to be doing that day. Um, usually on everything I've done, yes, I will show up completely memorized, but there's something about having the material with you that kind of it, it almost I almost I realized I was using it as a crutch and I would like you know, stick it under a couch cushion or something and, and do the scene. And then I could refer to it in between takes. But Olivia wanted to completely eliminate that. And she wanted us to really just count on ourselves and count on each other to know the scene and, and trust ourselves because that's what Molly and Amy would do. Is So that was really, really helpful. Um, but Beanie and I knew, okay, well, we got to get this right for Olivia. Because she was also saying, like, you know, we, we don't have to do it. You can totally not do it if you don't want to. We're like, no, we are doing this. We are doing this for you. We can do it. Um, but, yeah, it was it was so cool to, to share that with Beanie. It was really cool. Well, uh, congratulations on both uh, Booksmart and Unbelievable. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's, yeah. it's been a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to me and having me. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks to everyone watching. And, uh, you know, please visit goldderby.com for our latest awards news and to make your predictions for everything coming up. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been fun.